Good day. I'm Reverend Ann Cubbage, privileged to be the senior pastor here at Broadmoor Community Church, a church that believes so strongly no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. As we continue through our close encounters with Christ during Lent, we all have opportunities to do things like be in small groups. Perhaps you would like to do that. There are some slides at the end of this service that you can find out how to get involved and how to participate. We also might want to, instead of giving up chocolate, we might want to instead take on something like giving a gift to someone who is in need, like helping at a food pantry, something of that sort. I challenge you to consider what it is you might do. And during this Lenten period, we also have some of the secular holidays. There are St. Patrick's Day and several others. And here at this church, we have a couple of groups that we'll be celebrating. The Baby Boomers will, as well as the Senior Fellowship. And if you'd like to know more, feel free to call the church, 719-473-1807. We continue to have our children's worship opportunities during worship or on first Sundays to meet with the congregation in community worship. We have youth zone in the evenings on Sundays, and we have several other small groups that have started as we study Freeing Jesus by Diana Butler Bass. We are going to be having and hosting a community Easter egg hunt. It was so much fun last year that we're doing it again. And if you would like to participate, it was on it is on April Fool's Day, April 1st, at noon. I would invite you to come to participate, to bring your children or your neighbor children if you're in the area. We are at 315 Lake Avenue. And now I would invite you to light the candle that you might have waiting for worship. To get up off your couch or out of your jammies and to truly say, God, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Will you please join me in prayer? Holy and loving God, we come this day hoping to encounter Christ. We come with burdens and questions that only he can answer. May we open our hearts to him. May our lives be healed and strengthened for service. In Jesus' holy name, we thank you. We praise you. We come to worship you, God. Amen. Hi friends, it's Miss Liz. How are you doing today? Thanks for watching, and it's so good to see you as always. So my friends, today I want to tell you a story from the Bible. It's a story about Jesus and a man who came to see him. His name was Nicodemus. Now Nicodemus came to see Jesus very late at night one night. It was probably dark out, maybe a little creepy, and he found his way to Jesus because he wanted to ask him some questions. He knew that Jesus was a teacher sent from God, and so he wanted to know more about what Jesus was saying. Jesus told Nicodemus that if he wanted to see the kingdom of God, he had to be born again or born from above. Nicodemus said, what? How can somebody possibly be born again? Jesus said kind of the same thing to Nicodemus. If you want to see God's kingdom, if you want to really know what my teaching is about, you have to be born anew. Nicodemus asked the same question. How can somebody possibly crawl back into their mother's stomach and be born a second time? Jesus said, Nicodemus, you're talking about things on the earth. And what I'm talking about 
are heavenly things. But I want you to know that God loved the whole world so much that God sent God's son to save the world because God loves the whole world so very, very much. So, my friends, do you know what I think this story can tell us? Well, I think this story tells us first that it is okay if we don't understand everything about Jesus. We may have lots and lots of questions. We may have find lots of stories confusing and that's okay. Jesus welcomes our questions and the fact that we don't understand. But when we don't understand and when we have questions, God wants to remind us that God loves us and God loves the whole world so very much. And that's the most important thing that we need to know. Why don't we say a prayer? You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your love. Help me to know that it is okay to have questions. Help me to know that it's okay when I don't understand. But help me remember that you love me and the whole world so very much. Thank you, God. We love you. Amen. All right, my friends, go out and be light in the world, and I'll see you again soon.
I invite you to hear an interesting conversation out of John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. I tell you the truth, Jesus said, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? Nicodemus asked. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? I assure you, Jesus said, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born from above. The wind blows wherever it wants. Just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible? Nicodemus asked. You are a respected Jewish teacher, Jesus said, and yet you don't understand these things? We tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony? But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. The street lights out. It's almost pitch black and every snap of a twig or unidentified shuffle makes your heart jump. And you are certain that every shadow represents something, something lurking, something waiting. You've seen enough scary movies to know that if you walk out into the dark, you are bound to have some sort of dramatic, possibly even frightening encounter. Despite this, Nicodemus slipped out of his home in the dark of night to visit with this rabbi, this Jesus. Despite his trepidation, despite his need for secrecy, Nicodemus wanted he needed to experience this close encounter with Christ. What do you so suppose he expected? Expectations are a major part of our lives. Before you're even born, there's the expectation that you'll be healthy. You are expected to crawl, walk, and be potty trained by a certain age. And once school starts, then you're expected to get good grades. You're expected to finish school, go to college, get a job. Parents expect their children to follow the rules, to be responsible, and to take care of them later in life. Then there are those expectations that young couples have when they're engaged. How many couples sit through premarital counseling or skip it altogether? thinking everything is going to be wonderful because they're madly in love. For those of you who have been married, what happens after the honeymoon is over? What happens when you begin to realize that the spouse you love is actually a mess sometimes? We have expectations of absolutely everything, even of God. And when things don't go as planned as we planned, how often do we get flustered and angry and blame God? It's true. We can't know what's coming next. 
God doesn't offer any guarantees, but we can trust that God will be with us through whatever circumstances we do face and that God will work with us to make the best out of even the most hopeless of times. God fulfills God's promises in God's own way, in God's own time. What we think to be impossible or absurd may prove to be precisely God's plan. And the only way we can get beyond the unbelievable is to let go of our expectations and accept God's even if we don't know what they are. Being a follower of Jesus requires a mind that is open to the unexpected. In an extraordinary encounter with Christ, late one night, Nicodemus learned this. He, a rule-following Pharisee, believed that when one does what is expected and keeps the law, all would be right in the world. On a side note, folks, how's that working for you? Yeah, I know. Anyway, I'm sure that Nicodemus' venture into the dark was because it just wasn't working for him. He had followed all the laws, done what was right, but did not feel God's presence. He wanted his life to be more full, more connected to the holy. And so he had headed out in secret to see if this charismatic rabbi had any answers for him. Out into the dark, unknown expecting at every turn to be found out, to run into somebody he knew, and yet hoping, praying to find the light that he was missing. Jesus encouraged Nicodemus to let go, to recognize that his standing before God was not about what he did or had done, but about God's grace. Nicodemus had to learn that the life of faith requires us to give up our need, to know everything in advance, and to have all of the answers. It requires us to expect the unexpected and to trust God even when God's plan is shocking, unbelievable, and, yes, surprising. Be not surprised, Jesus says to Nicodemus, that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses. And you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. You and I, all of us together, like Nicodemus, can also hear God's voice, pushing us away from our expectations and toward those that only God can know. God calls us to places that we don't want to go but blesses us there in those unexpected places. This promise that the Spirit blows where it will gives us tremendous freedom when we think about how best to respond to the challenges and opportunities of our world. Part of what is so anxiety-provoking about this time is that it feels like there are no roadmaps. But we are not alone. The Spirit accompanies and empowers us to face a future that we may feel is uncertain. Nicodemus certainly was there. And from this perspective, Jesus reminds Nicodemus and all of us that the anxiety that might be felt can be transformed into excitement. This means that we are free. We don't have to do things the way they've always been done. We can risk, fail, learn, and grow in ways we'd never imagined because the Spirit will blow us in directions we hadn't imagined. Whatever setbacks or even failures we may experience are always temporary. We are free to experiment and struggle and succeed and flop and live and love and die, all knowing that in Christ God has already worked to redeem the whole world. In other words, redemption is God's responsibility, not ours. The opportunities in front of us are great. 
There is no doubt about it. We may not know what lies ahead. And as Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians, we walk by faith, not by sight. It is not always easy. It is not always clear. We cannot always even rationally explain it. However, when we trust God, it is always right. We are free and we are aided by God's powerful spirit who will blow us places we'd never imagined. May we let go of our expectations and allow God to surprise us in every close encounter with Christ, even when we come sneaking in in the dark of the night. Amen. I would like to invite you to a time of prayer. We'll have a bit of silence. I will then say some prayers for the people. And together, I hope that you will join me in praying the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. It will be at the bottom of the screen. Let us pray. Loving God, we come to you this day from places in our homes, in the car, on vacation, sitting in chairs or jogging through the neighborhood. We come to you knowing that you are with us, that you hear our prayers even when we are not daring to say what they are, that you grant your blessings upon us. God, we ask that you would be with us. Grant us courage and wisdom in this life and in the life to come. Grant us experiences and love and joy that we can share with others. We are so aware that we have friends and neighbors and people we don't even know who are dealing with terrible situations, homelessness, hunger, illnesses, natural disasters, war, famine, drought. Holy God, we ask that you would bring comfort to them and allow us to know how we can best reach out to care for them. They are all your children and you love them. We come this day with our own concerns and our own joys, but we know that you will continue to surround us with your loving embrace even as you came in the form of a tiny baby and grew into the great teacher and redeemer, Jesus the Christ. And we pray the prayer that he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
now go out in peace. Go out into the light of the day, go into the dark of the night, and know that you will have a close encounter with Christ. It may be surprising. It may be frightening. It may be call you to do things or to think things that are way beyond your understanding. Go out now knowing that God is with you in all of those encounters. Thank you.